Some viewers may find this disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Hi my loves, it's Destin Choice and you're watching Choice TV. So for today's video, I decided to get on here and speak about all the bullshit that went on during the filming of The Vampire Diaries. More specifically, all the scandal surrounding Cat Graham and all the bullshit a lot of us never noticed that was right in front of our face the whole time. Well, as much as I love these people, I think Matt finally had to make the decision to, to let go of that love. So Matt's out figuring out his own life finally for the first time. So. More power to Matt. Mm. <laughs> so are we going to see him off on his own life? No. <laughs> oh, He's okay. Yes, it's going to be very exciting. I'm driving a rad truck. I don't have a cop belt on this time, so I can sit in the seat comfortably. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that uncomfortable? Driving into oh, the sunset, yeah. baby. He's doing craft services on a production <laughs> filming in Atlanta. <laughs> Zach volunteered to grip an electric. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So today I really wanted to speak on a very loaded topic that seems to always get swept under the rug by many people. Katarina Graham, also known as Kat Graham, is a 31-year-old actress, model, dancer, and singer, born in Switzerland but raised in Los Angeles, California, to a Jewish mother and an absent father who wasn't very active in her life. Despite her minor circumstances, Kat made it her mission to be successful in the world of the arts. Kat Graham has been actively working in the entertainment industry since she was about 6 years old, and she has persistently worked throughout her childhood. In her uprise, Kat starred in several commercials and made notable appearances in projects like The Parent Trap, Malcolm in the Middle, and even Hannah Montana. Kat even appeared in many music videos throughout her teen years and could be spotted in several music videos throughout the early 2000s. But as we all know, Kat Graham took over the industry when she was casted as Bonnie Bennett in The Vampire Diaries at only 19 years old. Kat Graham has always been very transparent about her come up in Hollywood, and she even stated that she was a struggling actress at the time. She also struggled to find lucrative work in the competitive streets of Hollywood, so the role of Bonnie really catapulted her to success and made her a huge household name. Despite Kat being biracial, she endured a lot of racial prejudice, so she had to assimilate to be deemed appropriate. So due to her strong black features, Kat had to assimilate to what Hollywood wanted. She even one time stated, Growing up, what I've noticed is that other mixed girls have looser curls, but I don't have that. I have an afro, and my mom always took me to the salon to get my hair permed or straightened before auditions. Kat was oftentimes overlooked, and it took a toll on her self-esteem and self-worth. Especially because, despite her character being incredibly popular, she was still mistreated behind the scenes and while on set of the show. However, producers did try to hide this, but it was very evident and couldn't be hidden because the fans always peep game. Not that many people know this, but The Vampire Diaries was actually based on a novel series from the 1990s, and due to its popularity, it was inevitable that the show would do well. However, Kat's character, Bonnie Bennett, was originally supposed to be casted as a white girl with bright red hair who was a witch. But the creators and the writers of the show, Kevin Williamson and Julie Plegg, wanted to take a different approach by adding a black woman, and Kat ended up being the token black person on the show. And of course, if a show is mostly white, there really is no issue. But marginalized groups tend to always be used as pawns for comedic relief or as a sidekick to make their white counterparts look good. Now I understand that if a show is white, it is what it is. Don't watch it if you don't like it. But it is kind of unfortunate that sometimes they'll sprinkle a minority in there just to get some comedic relief. And I don't know who needs to hear this, but tokenism is not diversity. So I don't want anybody telling me that black people or people of color should be grateful that we're even represented at all. Despite the success of the show, Kat being the only black person on the show really caused her a lot of stress and she dealt with a lot of major cyberbullying from a lot of the racist vampire diary fandoms. Many people used to post very interesting memes about her and post very enticing photos and trying to gaslight her just because she was the only black person. Which is unfortunate because the producers knew this and they still treated her like shit. The cast eventually got to a level where they all became respected celebrities overnight and the show became popular overseas and it became syndicated in over 40 countries and most of the main cast members even were nominated for numerous awards and got the opportunities to grace several magazines except for Cat Graham but that's besides the point. Now anyone that watched The Vampire Diaries obviously knows that Kat's character received the worst storylines and the worst character growth. She didn't even get an episode dedicated to her until late season 6, which is unfortunate because again, she is a main cast member. Now what do I mean? Her character was always killed off. And I get it, characters die, especially in a supernatural show. But the fact that she's a main character and she was constantly killed raised a lot of eyebrows for a lot of people. Her character was profusely set up with love interests that would always end up cheating on her, being written off the show, or sometimes even dying at the end of each season. And this really annoyed her. We're talking about the fact that they can't stop killing you. This is two. Yeah, that's right. I yeah. don't know what that's about. Right, right? Uh, like two finales like, in a row. I should be just worried. Like, yeah, do you think, um, are you getting used to it? Is it pretty old hat now? 
No, no, it's not because each time it happens, it's just done so differently. But um, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, you have any uh, any thoughts on how you want to die at the end of the next season? You want to like jump ahead, maybe? Like, <laughs> Um, hopefully by eating too many Krispy Kremes. So, what is your favorite Bonnie moment? Uh, my favorite Bonnie moment is when uh, I've died. I can't even. I can't even. <laughs> the actors, have you guys ever made any suggestions to the writers that have made it into the scripts? No, we end up dead. <laughs> There would even be moments where her character would be killed off at the beginning of the season and wouldn't even come back until the end of the season or the beginning of a new season. But since the show is a supernatural based genre, they would always bring her back. But anytime she was brought back, she would always be used as a vessel to make her white counterparts and her other castmates look good. Kat's character not only got minimal screen time, but she was always put in scenes with short term characters or tossed into a scene where the focus would be on another main character for some odd reason. And to make matters even worse, the producers would even add new characters and when they would add new characters they would give them backstories but the person who's been there for three to five years wouldn't even get a backstory for themselves. In season three of this series the writers gave her an episode about her mom who later died the same exact episode and then she was given four episodes about her father who died after a few episodes. It was also very evident throughout the series that the stylist on the show had no idea how to style her hair because she would always be on camera sometimes looking real crazy and her lace fronts would always be in shambles compared to the rest of the cast and in my opinion i think they dimmed down her looks specifically because they didn't want her catching attention from the audience she even one time requested that her character go for a more natural look but she was shut down in a heartbeat cat graham one time stated to vogue magazine I asked a few times for natural hair but it was shut down pretty quickly now one thing i really want to speak about is one incident that happened back in 2012 that for some reason people always seem to forget always happened back in 2012 there was one incident where one of the writers and producers and even one of the cast members got on Twitter and publicly disrespected Kat and disrespected her black fan base. Fans were getting very fed up at the way Kat was being treated and the way she was being portrayed on the Vampire Diaries. So many fans took to social media and a lot of them took to Twitter saying stuff like this. Okay, I'm just going to say this. Everyone jokes about it, but I'm just going to say it. The Vampire Diaries writers are racist. A magical Negro. Since she had her powers, that's all she does. She helps them do everything with her right. That's her role in the show. One fan tweeted Julie saying, I have to ask, how can you make Jamie Bonnie's love interest? Do you hate us that much? At Julie Pleck? Sorry, but ugh, I had to tweet this. To which Julie then went on a massive, unnecessary Twitter rant. Dear Sutton Bonnie fans, you would prefer a beautiful, strong Bonnie to be with a murderous vampire like Cole? Sorry to non-Sutton Bonnie fans who have no idea what I'm talking about. Just had to vent. Sometimes my mentions get ugly. I don't mean to make it hostile, but no. I'm sorry. With respect, just no. Girl, bye. Just so unprofessional. Ugh. And then one of her dusty ass castmates, Matt Davis, decided to interject and insert himself in a situation that had nothing to do with him. And he basically said, Are Jewish people upset about Bonnie's treatment too? Bitch, bye. Now, obviously we know Cat Graham is half Jewish. So, of course, anyone with a brain knows what he was trying to say and what he was trying to do. First of all, fans have every right to be very upset because Cat's character was very stagnant and didn't have any growth. And they try to force a struggle storyline just because fans asked for it. And they basically said... Here you go, damn, here you go, take it. But of course, all the tweets were later deleted after all the backlash they received back in 2012, and Kat never addressed these idiots. It was very evident that everyone pretty much tried to sweep it under the rug, but it wasn't until a year later that fans would notice the animosity during interviews at many conventions. Okay, who's most likely to throw a tantrum? Kat. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I don't know. Um, it was even a moment at Comic Con that a lot of people did not pee. Salzman, what a name! Yeah, we, my uh, mom named me a Lark Salzman. I'd be. Ariana, How they've evolved since 
Sensible. <laughs> um, speaking of um, characters possibly crossing over or, or coming in, you've got some new characters coming in this season um, that we probably don't want to spoil too much, but there's always that possibility for mixing relationships up. And Kat, do you think that um, a romance between Jeremy and Bonnie could still exist? Or do you think, uh, you know, he'll be like, hey... Now, I'm not sure what this ordeal was about, but fans pretty much put the pieces together and assumed that Brett Davis was not allowed on stage, considering this was a little bit after his stupid-ass Twitter rant. I don't know about y'all, but Kat Graham looked absolutely infuriated. And her passive aggression was a dead giveaway, right along with the constant whispers in the producer's ears and the teary eyes she showed. As time went on and as the show progressed, eventually the main character, Elena, played by Nina Dobrave, left the show out of nowhere for personal reasons. Despite one of the main characters being gone, everyone assumed that Kat was finally going to get some shine and she was finally going to be pushed into a lot of these storylines. But nope, the producers still continued to minimize Kat's scenes and even added new characters and recreated new supernatural beings to rearrange the show's storyline. Meanwhile, Kat was also pursuing her music career and the producers wouldn't even let her promote her music on the show. Our editors really lay the music in for the show and our music supervisor collects songs to use and, and clears them in. <laughs> Ian sent me songs over the years, like I'll get a little, I'll get a little like iTunes, like you've got a gift from Ian Summerhalder, and I'm like, woohoo, and it's a, it's a song, like Connor Oberst, I know, you sent me, and um, Kat sent me like Whatever. CDs, and I was like, oh, it's been great actually, because it's, everybody gets a chance to try to showcase their, the people they're fans of. Yeah, it's important. Yeah, it's important. <laughs> it's not like that necessarily. I would like to ask Michael Malarkey if he would like to bring his musical talents to the show. Ooh. Which, Wait, you for those have, who don't know, you have to have you. he has been <laughs> he has been on a nice world tour across he all of been. Europe with a man and his guitar. So, Michael, how do you feel about bringing your musical talents to the show? Well, hey, man. <laughs> sure. Well, it's funny you should ask because I was just telling him not 30 minutes ago that we are bringing his musical talents to the show. Woo! Yeah, that's really fantastic. Oh, hey, this is for us. Oh, coolness. Um, are there any... We should ask it. Oh, yeah, ask here, here, here. Yes. Um, are there any... We should ask it. Oh, yeah, here, here, here. Are there any guest stars next season? season? So Kat was still being used as a vessel to make other characters look good. But it wasn't until the cast started doing press runs for the 6th and 7th season that that things start to seem a little bit more off-putting than usual. Tim, she makes him less of a homicidal maniac, and he so challenges good. her. And so they just have that fun banter. The, the actor chemistry is great. So I don't know. I'm feeling like Damon is still madly in love with Elena. Bonnie's going to maybe have her own love interest this year, and it's Ooh. not going to be Damon. So Sorry, Damon fans. Sorry, Tea happening. Like, oh. Rejected. Thanks for the award, though. <laughs> On the Later. record, I'm 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 open to that, and I know the fans would like to see something like that. But you know, it's it's really it's it's their Don't show, mess with a good thing. Mean? That's how we think. Of it. Your new love interest. I mean, it's not going to be Jeremy. He's he's gone. You guys are you guys I've, are running out, running out of Gilbert. I've pitched female witches. I've oh, I've pitched right. that. I've, I've pitched I've pitched yeah, Bonnie yeah, just you know having some you know discovery sexually about herself. Well, I mean, Ian is I think close I pitched, to that. that, that, that <laughs> I pitched everything. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Back in the summer of 2015, the entire cast attended Comic Con to promote the sixth and seventh season, and Cat Graham was forced to sit at the far left of the stage, and she was even introduced last. Get it started. First up, star Michael Malarkey. Executive producer, Julie Plack. Paul Wesley. Executive producer, Caroline Dries. And last, but by no means least, Kat Graham. Guys, give it up for the cast of The Vampire Diaries. I'm down there. <laughs> Are we allowed to sit? Yeah. Yes. Everyone, please. Oh, right just waiting for the ladies. Which is weird because considering she's a main cast member, why are producers being introduced before her? Not to mention, it was a little bit suspect how she was out of frame. Good day over 40, buddy. 
That's what they tell me. <laughs> so I'm curious, Caroline, with uh, Bonnie and Elena sort of linked now, does the lovely Cat Graham have the best job security on this death prone <laughs> show? <laughs> Uh, Bonnie dies like every season, so uh, yeah, it's like nine lives. I'm not sure. We're probably at six, maybe now, yeah. five or six. So yeah, she's got at least three seasons left in her. Nice. I like it. <laughs> Bonnie and Kat are badass. They both want the best for the, the world and the people around them. They're super duper duper sincere and loving. Um, but, but, when you piss either one of them off, <laughs> Run. <laughs> That's accurate. And as you can see, one of the producers had their backs turned against her, which to me was a dead giveaway that there was a lot of issues behind the scenes. There were even some events and even some press runs where Kat refused to show up. And sometimes when she would show up to the press runs and interviews, the host and cast barely acknowledged her again, per usual, and they acted like she didn't even exist. Um, <laughs> you know, I could go on forever. It's, yeah, well, I that's, that's kind of so. the thing is that we all adore working with each other so much that we can't really differentiate. And for no. me, I, I joined late and I feel very um, um, lucky yeah. and happy to be a part of this wonderful family, you know, and I feel like I've been welcomed. Liv and Tyler. Family. I'll keep going if you want. <laughs> Liv, Tyler, are you still going on? Sorry. Tyler. Oh, she wasn't finished with her. <laughs> Matt and anyway. Damon would uh, make Rose Matt and Damon. Damon. I thought that was really nice. uh, <laughs> Is my Damon. mic on? Sorry. I'll shut up. <laughs> That's all right. Cool. <laughs> Guys, well listen, later that year, a video randomly went viral of Kat Graham having a meetup in Brazil. Kat randomly burst into tears and began to bawl her eyes out after a lot of fans praised her and cheered her on. Many fans who attended her Brazil meetup claimed that the big reason that she cried was because she never felt so accepted or embraced before. <laughs> Kat only got emotional because anytime she attends conventions in America, people just always forget she's there. And honestly, in my personal opinion, it seems like the big reason why the producers might not be fond of her was probably because they expected her to be grateful for the opportunity. But of course, things get worse. There was even an incident where one of the cast members racially challenged her during an interview and no one said anything. Zach Rowick, who played Matt Donovan on the show, decided to publicly disrespect Kat by doing some very questionable things. The way he was talking to her and the way he was looking at her, you can clearly see that he did not like her at all. Throughout some of the questions that he was receiving, he did some very questionable action. While Zach was answering a few questions and speaking on his character's growth and development, he threw out the black power sign and glared right at Kat. Well, as much as I love these people, I think Matt finally had to make the decision to, to let go of that love, so Matt's out figuring out his own life, finally, for the first time, so. More power to Matt. Mm -hmm. More power to Matt. Mm -hmm. So are we gonna see him off on his own life? No. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes, it's gonna be very exciting. I'm driving a rad truck. I don't have a cop belt on this time, so I can sit in the seat comfortably. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that uncomfortable? But. He did that shit as a way to get at her, and it was very obvious because just from the look on her face, you could tell that she was not feeling it. And of course, one of her cast members grilled him and looked at him really crazy. So are we gonna see him off on his own? Now, some of you guys might say, well, that's not that serious. If someone throws out the black power sign, that's a form of respect. I get that. But it gets worse. He then did some very questionable hand symbols later on in the interview. He randomly had the audacity to throw out the Nazi salute symbol. Matt's out figuring out his own life. <laughs> oh, is that uncomfortable? Driving into oh, the sunset, yeah. baby. Driving into oh, the sunset, yeah. baby. Driving into the sunset, baby. He's doing craft services on a production <laughs> filming in Atlanta. Z Zach <laughs> volunteered to grip an electric. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very curious in general for you, like Julie and Kevin, when you're crafting this season, how do you, when you're deciding like what you want your big bad to be? Which, if you didn't know, was a popular gesture used by Hitler in Nazi Germany. Now, just to play devil's advocate, I get it. There's a possibility that he just did that on accident. Maybe he was trying to do something else and it just came out how we think it came out. That gesture is very specific. And let's be honest here. 
Kat Graham is half Jewish. Her mother is Jewish. And her facial expressions said it all for me on what he really meant when he threw that hand symbol out there. I think Matt finally had to make the decision to, to let go of that love. So Matt's out figuring out his own life finally for the first time. So more power to Matt. Mm. <laughs> so are we going to see him? And isn't it a little bit weird how he throws out the black power sign and then throws out the little gesture? Hmm. And it's unfortunate, but a lot of people of color and even people part of marginalized groups have to stay quiet. There's a lot of people who are being bullied behind the scenes because of their sexualities and people who are being mistreated behind the scenes because of their race. But they have to stay quiet because if they don't stay quiet, they won't open doors for people who look just like them. And don't get me wrong, everybody at one point or at some point has laughed, cringed, or done something that could be deemed as racially, culturally, or nationally insensitive, right? It's common. However, it is a little bit fucked up that he was doing it with malicious intent. Just from seeing how red he was getting, you can clearly see that just the glances he was making at her was just a way of trying to push her over the limit. And let me just say that the CW has a lot of explaining to do because I really want to know how after that gesture, this man is still working in Hollywood. Now what really did it for me was a few months after this incident back in 2016, Kat actually announced that she would be leaving the show and that season 8 would be her last season and that she would no longer be returning if they were to do a season 9. When I started um, on my journey, I was a fan like you guys and I watched TV shows and um, Then days later, her friend, Ian Summerholder, who played Damon, randomly announced right after her statement, mind you, this is literally a week later, that the show is over. Which made no sense to a lot of fans because the CW never announced whether or not the show was going to get renewed or if it was going to get canceled. The CW then quickly responded, denying that the show was even canceled because Ian does not have the final say on whether or not the show gets to continue or not. But then, Ian Summerholder retracted his statement a few days later by basically saying, oops. No one was really sure why he decided to walk away from the show, but many fans assumed that he was doing it out of loyalty for Kat. These interviews clearly speak louder than anything that we could ever see. Kat Graham is such a strong actor, and Bonnie is such a strong character that I, I, I want her, and you'll see her sort of start coming back into her own and sort of taking a lot less shit, you know? Come to find out years later, Ian and Kat actually pushed the producers that they wanted a love scene to happen between her and him. But clearly the producers were not feeling it because the producers didn't want any attention on Kat. Oh yeah. Oh. Um, I don't know, it's such a dangerous question. Um, Bonnie and Damon in rock. They do, yeah. they do Little really Damon. rock. Bonnie and I, Kai. Yeah, there's been some really fun stuff. I mean, you know, the show's, there's so much that goes on on the show. You know? Vampire Diaries is actually based on an actual novel series from the 1990s. And in the book, at the end, Damon actually ends up with Bonnie Bennett. So it would have actually made a lot of sense if they had a love scenario. The reason why the show ended was because Ian wanted to walk away. Hearing about season eight and they're trying to say like it's the last one. I wanted to hear it from you. Like, is this the last season that you're working on? Um, for me, yes. Funny how when both of them decide to walk away, all of a sudden, 
the show is over. Which is weird because CW hinted numerous times that a season 9 was possible. So once Ian of course decided that he was not going to continue, the writers had to restructure the entire storyline and make it accommodate to the fans because this is the final season. The season finale of the show received mixed reviews because again, they tried Bonnie with a horrible storyline because if you didn't know, her love interest died at the end of the season. And so And they gave her a horrendous struggle wig, which clearly you can see looks awful. Now, clearly, I don't know anything about wigs, but come on. Y'all can't tell me they weren't trying to play this girl. I mean, come on. For her last season, the least they could have did was let her choose her own damn hair, considering they're the ones who forced her to wear these wigs throughout the eight years she was on this damn show. Like, ugh, for goodness sakes. But that was only the tip of the iceberg. At the end of the season, if you guys look closely, Bonnie's storyline at the end of the finale was she was going to travel the world and live her life. I'm determined to keep my promise to Enzo. I'm going to live this life to the fullest. I want to see the world. Enjoy my life. But if you look at the brochures that she had in her hand, it said the land of Africa. And fans were very upset again. One fan, rightfully so, called out the producers and Julie Pleck and said, The fact that Julie Pleck cared so little about Bonnie that she just had Bonnie getting a plane ticket to Africa and couldn't even take five seconds to Google to send her to an actual country that's in Africa, it was just a ticket with the land of Africa on it. Because they put Africa on the brochure as if Africa isn't a whole continent made up of over 50 different countries. Kat was later asked about her thoughts on the show's ending and she gave a very thought-provoking answer on the show's demise and the end of it. Okay, some big news, some sad news, some news we were expecting. Uh, I don't know, what are your emotions like today? Yeah, I mean, what a bittersweet journey. You know, you are so proud to have eight seasons of a show but to you know i came into this show as a pipsqueak and even though i'm still a pipsqueak um it really you know we grew into these into who we are and and being on the show for eight years i mean you know ever since then the vampire diaries franchise has evolved into multiple spin-offs and of course julie plague being the narcissist that she is was asked about cat's departure and she stated this i'll be honest cat is thinking further ahead into the future than i even was i was still wrapping my head around what the hell is in store for season eight and she's jumping ahead to season nine Shut up! Every time Kat Graham is asked about her experience, she never addresses it, nor has she ever spoken on the speculation that a lot of the fans had about the show. She always seems to dance around the question every time she's asked about it. Just cool kids, in my mind. You know, and it wasn't until I got into Hollywood where I started to pay attention to the way characters were written and the way um, certain people were promoted or not even getting a chance to read for certain things. And I'd be like, what's that about? And then it wasn't until Vampire Diaries I had to really like, it was really brought to my attention um, how people were reacting to certain things. And these were conversations that, you know, we all had to have as a family and say, how are we going to change the narrative of what's happening in Hollywood? And I think, you know, I think we did a pretty good job. We did what we could. A year after the show ended, Kat Graham actually got into a heated disagreement and a heated argument with a whole bunch of fans of the show. And things got very ugly to the point where a lot of fans called her an ungrateful brat. A fan tweeted Kat, we miss you. To then she replied, you miss Bonnie, big difference. Now at first glance, it seems disrespectful. But for those of you guys who didn't know, Kat was actually very upset throughout that week because fans kept constantly tagging her in photos that she wasn't in. So it got on her nerves to the point where she just blew up. Then another fan replied saying, no Kat, we missed you too. You played Bonnie perfectly. When people say they miss you, they mean that. And she also replied, I'm still working, what's there to miss? Why do the Vampire Diary fans still insist on tagging me in photos I'm not even in? Cut that annoying shit out. Hashtag, about to start blocking you. Then she also said, tag me as Bonnie for years. I worked my ass off that character, but stop tagging me in shirtless photos of Ian and etc. I'm not here for it. Now clearly what she did was very disrespectful and very rude because of course the fan meant no harm. But to be fair, she was tagged in several pictures without her being in it. And mind you, she went a whole seven to eight years being excluded, being mistreated, and being gaslit 
throughout the years she was on the show. And of course, with all the racial tension that occurred back in 2020, people encouraged her to expose her experience with Julie Plague, and people asked her numerous times to speak on her experience on the show because it was clear she was being treated horribly. And the reason why people wanted Kat Graham to speak on her experience on the Vampire Diaries was because Julie Plex, dusty ass, wanted to hop on the whole protect black women bandwagon, and she says... I believe black women are going to save us all, and I'm so sorry to put that pressure on you, but white women are continually failing all of us. I hope you understand that me seeing you as a hero is not meant to add to your anxiety, rather it's to lift you up and celebrate you. Shut up! But shockingly, Kat Graham refused, sharing a post on Twitter telling everyone basically this. I appreciate the support I have received in particular in the last few days regarding the treatment I experienced in the hands of writers, directors, executives, and members of the public. I am making a conscious decision to use this moment in time to ask you all to channel your anger and frustration into helping end police brutality and systemic racism in America. And I'm not sure how she feels about the cast now, but all I do know is Kat does follow most of the cast members on the show, except of course for the dude who threw out the Nazi sign and the dude who said that she should be grateful and the fans should be grateful that she even got a storyline. And let's be honest, Kat is a black woman in the industry and there aren't that many roles for black women in the industry that aren't stereotypes. So I understand why her silence is so crisp. It's obvious that she wants to make sure she stays silent because she wants to get to a level to where she doesn't need these people anymore. And let's think about it for a second. If Kat exposes the industry, her music and talent may get overshadowed by the media attention that she gets around it. I mean, imagine if you were mistreated for seven to eight years and then when you speak out, all of this blows up and goes out of control and then eventually it overshadows your music and the work you want to do. Although she was overlooked and although she didn't get the same nominations and the same awards as the other actors, she deserves everything and more because she was the vessel that made the show popular. And to this day, Kat Graham is still taking over the industry. Kat Graham has participated in so many major films after the show ended four years ago. And compared to her cast members, she's clearly booked and busy despite all she went through. Kat Graham went on to star in many major projects where her most notable being her role as Jada Pinkett Smith in the Tupac biopic, All Eyes On Me. Kat also is currently on a hit Nickelodeon series, which is an animated reboot of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, where she plays April O'Neil. And the show has been on for literally three years strong. The animated series also got picked up recently to be a movie, and it's set to release in 2021. And I really hope that one day she tells her story and all the things that she endured while dealing with the people on the show. So despite everything that Kat had to go through, it wasn't all for nothing. And I really hope that what she went through paves a lane for more diversity. Clearly, Kat was working behind the scenes to make sure future actors and future actresses who look like her don't get the same treatment. In the long run, the truth will come out. And like I always say, whatever happens in the dark always comes to the light. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Please guys, do me a huge favor and go follow Kat Graham. Go blow up her social media. Go follow her. Go support her. Go show her love. Go like her pictures. Go stream her music and check out her music. Check out her work and check out all the projects she's been on. She absolutely deserves it. She worked her ass off and took the beatings so a lot of future actresses and actors didn't have to. And it might take a few more actors and actresses to take the beatings for more change to come. But in the meantime, follow me on Instagram if you made it this far. Follow me. Again, thank you guys for watching this video. I really appreciate y'all tuning in. Give your thoughts to your pins and comment section down below. Tell me what videos y'all want to see next. So, yeah, that's that. Like, comment, and subscribe. Choice out this bitch. Myself and I, I took about an end, and that's what I found out. Cause there ain't no real surprise. I took a vow, and for now on, I'm gonna be my own best friend. Me, myself, and I, I'm taking a half an end. That's what I found out. And no, ain't no real surprise. I took a vow, and for now on, I'm gonna be my own best friend. I me, myself, and I, I'm by myself, and I'm having a half an me, myself. And I am a <laughs>